Yeah, uh, good afternoon. Thanks for everybody being on here. Um, disappointing loss on Saturday uh, to, a, to a very good Texas team, team that's really talented. I uh, thought our guys competed. Uh, proud of their effort. Really had a good plan in, in all three phases. Uh, we just collectively didn't get it done on Saturday. I think three areas that are that are key for us coming out of that game. Um, I think we have to make calls and plays in critical situations. That's that's on myself, staff, players, everybody. Um, you know, we've got to improve our situational awareness. Um, we didn't have great situational awareness in the game, and then we lost fundamentals and key at key points. And when you get into um, really pressure situations, I think you got to fall back into your training. And we didn't do that. Um, kind of went, kind of went rogue and kind of lost footwork, little detail things, and some of the the pressure plays. Um, kind of ra- recap of the game, special teams. I thought our punt coverage was really good, uh, really good. That's the best we punted the ball. We had one that was kind of short, but the rest of them that was uh, that was the best we punted the ball. And our coverage units, which are going to have to be really good this week, our punt coverage unit, which is going to have to be really good again this week. Uh, I thought did a nice job uh, limiting Texas. I think they had negative two punt return yardage. Kickoff, other than the the kick that went out of bounds, our kickoff team uh, bounced back and had a really good day. Uh, we had a huge we had a huge punt return that led to a field goal, um, and then we made two field goals. and And I thought our field goal block team continues to to affect kicks. Uh, Texas had has a really good kicker, and they missed a kick right before half. And I thought we really were able to get some pressure there and affected that um, defensively. You know, the negatives, we allowed too many rushing yards. Um, and, I, and, I, and I thought they really controlled the line of scrimmage on Saturday. Uh, we didn't have any takeaways, uh, several explosive pass plays down the field. Um, they didn't take advantage of a couple other ones they could have had. Um, Pies 17 points, had a lot of pass breakups, uh, and we found a way to get off the field. You know, I think overall, defensively, it wasn't one of our better performances. Um, we, uh, we didn't get home as much as we – we usually do or we would like to. We didn't create as many negative plays. Um, I think Texas was probably a little off as well, which helped us. Um, but I thought we played okay. We didn't play poorly by any means. Uh, 17 points, we'll take that. And you got to win with 17 points. But I think we can play better defensively. Um, offensively, the the two obvious negatives are, are red zone. Um, you know, and then and really what the red zone came to came down to is two fourth down plays. And, you know, our lack of rushing – on, on Saturday um, really really hurt us. Um, letting not being 100% uh, was a factor there. But really, I thought that, that Texas is interior guys, and, and that really wasn't the case. We really went in um, know, knowing that they were big in interior, but our inside guys have played well up until this point. Um, and we really tried to keep Osai out of the game as much as we could. And we did limit him. We did limit him. I thought we protected him well, but – their their interior D line uh, really were dominant in the game. Uh, the positives uh, we controlled the clock, um, really efficient in the pass game, especially in the second half. Um, had several explosive plays, didn't turn the ball over. Um, but it, in, at the end of the day, offensively, just not enough points, not enough points, and got to play better in critical situations. So disappointing. Um, we made we made a lot of progress um, over over the last year. Uh, really weren't in this in the in that game against Texas a year ago. Passed about midpoint of the third quarter, right there with multiple opportunities to win the game. So we're making improvement, but we're not in it for close. And so we've got to we've got to be able to finish those games, and and that's kind of where we're at right now. So disappointing um, that we couldn't come away in Austin with the win. So Big Twelve Conference every week's tough, and so we turn the page, and we've got uh, a TCU team coming in. That's uh, that's playing their best football, and um, won their last two games. I thought they uh, were, were really a, had a dominant performance over Texas Tech uh, last Saturday. Um, they they look like a typical Gary Patterson football team to me, and they're, they're physical, disciplined, um, and really really playing well right now in all three phases. Um, kind of preview of special teams. They've got a great punter, Australian older guy uh, that's really punted well for them. They have one of the best punt return units in the country. That's something that they take a lot of pride in. Uh, they've been consistent, consistently one of the best punt return units in the country. They took one uh, for a touchdown against us last year. 
got two returners, Spielman and Davis, that are special. Um, and we that's going to be a huge play in the game. You know, the games that they played well in, they've, they've always got big, big returns from their punt return unit. And they do a great job with kickoff return as well. And they, they do really good schemes, and they've got good returners. And so um, our coverage units, again, are going to be tested. I feel like I say that a lot, but this week is, 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 it, they will be again. Offensively, they're, they're a spread attack, um, ability to mix tempos. Uh, they go fast when they want to. Uh, they've been a very, very effective run on the football. I mean, if you look at the stats over the last two games, they've really ran the ball well. And I think that's kind of as they as they've gone through this winning streak here. That's been the key. Uh, their quarterback, in my in my mind, is very similar to Ellinger. Um, you know, he's a tough runner. Had 180 yards last week. Has ability to go the dead went Had an 81 yard run. So he's fast. He's improved his accuracy. Uh, tough kid, um, and he he's playing well for them right now. Uh, proved his accuracy as a pa as a passer. They've got a running back committee by committee. Uh, some heavily recruited kids in that room. Uh, they get a bunch of guys carries, and then receiver. They've got they've got good speed. Uh, they've got the barber kid that they get the ball to a lot of different ways, and he can make people miss. And and he played well at the end of last year, and has continued to be their leading receiver. And they've got a couple other guys that can really go. Um, you know, defensively, um, if you look at longevity, I think Gary's done it at a, an extremely high level for a, for for a long time. And uh, I'm not sure anybody in the last 20 years has played defense better than TCU. Uh, if you look at it, the whole package. And so that's a credit to him. Uh, it's always a challenge going against him. And they're playing their best ball of the year. They have two safeties that um, are are great players. Um, number seven. Will be a will be a high draft pick. Um, the linebacker who 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 feels like he's been there a, a long time, but Wallow he he is all over the field and plays the game the right way. Physical um, does a good job of of reading and, and reacting. Um, their two defensive ends are young, but are are legitimate pass pass rushers, and they got great first steps, great ball get off. Um, and so, and they give you nothing easy. That's the thing about when you play against TCU. You know, you know what the deal is going to be. There's going to be no, no easy plays, no easy runs, no easy completions. And so, this is a huge game for us. Uh, we're excited about getting back here at Mountaineer Field and and getting back um, in front of our home fans. Hope we had a good crowd. Uh, the weather's going to be outstanding on Saturday, so it should be a good day. With that, I'll take questions. First up is Greg Hunter. So, Neil, your, your lack of run production Saturday, you guys have been pretty good at that all year, but Saturday obviously was a struggle. Was it Letty's injury or the, the Texas just overpower you guys up front or a combination of both? Combination of both, Greg. It was. We we had more one-on-one -on -one losses. Um, and, and let's start this. Letty, Letty wasn't 100%. got hurt on the first play of the game uh, on a ball – on a play where he was actually on the perimeter blocking. Um, and he wasn't the same. Um, we're hoping – uh, we're going to take care of him this week. We're we're hopeful that he'll play. We won't know till later in the week. I know somebody will ask that. We won't know till later in the week. Um, but he was not at full speed. Um, and then uh, the two other issues in the run game were number one, they played really well, um, and they they were they were dominant at times interior wise. Um, I thought they used their hands, um, and we lost a lot of a lot of one on one blocks there. Second issue is where where were issues on our own. We we had some miscommunications, some mis IDs of fronts that um, on three third downs where we just weren't on the same page. Um, had decent um, – we should have had numbers in the box and, and we just didn't get on the right people. So, um, combi the combination of those three, Letty not being 100%, we, us losing one-on-ones, especially into 93 – uh, he looked like a like a big big time player in that game, and then us not doing a good enough job communicating and, and IDing. Next is Cody Nesper. Hey Neil, I wanted to ask about your fourth down philosophy of when you know you decide to go for it. Um, are there like guidelines you have for certain areas of the field, or is it all sort of on a case by case basis? No, I think the overall philosophy is 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 we're going to try to be aggressive. And we felt like we had good plays. Um, and, and those are plays we practiced for those situations. Some of them we've practiced for multiple weeks. Um, and I think that you, you're you going to have to score touchdowns in the red zone in this, in this league. Um, I think that's the way the game would have played out on Saturday also. 
um, if we if we were able to convert that. And so that that's that's really the overriding philosophy there. Normally, you know, if you if you want to talk about, you know, if I had, we really would like to run the ball in that situation, um, and on at least one of those, we had the the first time, the first play, we had a pass play that we really felt good about, and would have called that even if we were probably running the ball effectively. It was it was about a fourth and a yard and a half, and we had we had exactly what we wanted on that. Um, on the second one, it was it was a yard or less. Um, Ritter ran it. We ran a kind of an RPO where the quarterback had an option. He threw it, um, which I don't blame him. Um, if we had been maybe run the ball more effectively, we wouldn't. We'd have taken that option off. Charles Montgomery. Hey, coach. So you alluded to Max Duggan and how he is a dual threat. Uh, kind of he's a threat running the football so what do you do to prepare for a quarterback like that that he obviously he likes to run the ball a lot yeah he does they've asked him to to carry more of that as the year's gone on too and so what you do is you you you've got to you've got to prepare for quarterback run game whether it's um designed runs where they're calling it whether it's within the pass game where he pulls it down pulls the ball down and scramble um you got to put yourself in, in those situations in practice. Um, it makes it more difficult, though. You know, you, you, have, you have to put at least one more hat in the box or get – whether it's your, your, your nickel or your safety, you got to get another guy down in the box to, to help account for him. Michael Sussman, you're next. Uh, the individual receiving stats are pretty widely distributed at this point in the season between a number of guys – Ford Wheaton, James Wright, and Simmons are all at about 40 to 60 yards per game, give or take a few. Is this something that you like to see, or are you still waiting for that higher volume target to emerge in that receiving court? I think I think the answer is both. Um, we we love for for somebody just to be dominant week in week out, um, but I like having a lot of guys involved. I think it's good camaraderie, it's good chemistry. I think it's harder to prepare for. Um, and those receivers are getting better, and we're playing a bunch of those guys. We're playing seven, seven or eight consistently each week, and there's been different guys be productive. And so um, I like rolling in a bunch of guys. You keep them fresh. Um, defense can't really uh, lock in on any, any particular target. Kevin Kinder. Following up on the quarterback run game, Neil, he did a really good job against Sam Ellinger. Uh, Texas Tech's quarterback, Columbia, hurt you maybe a little bit more than you expected. Is that a factor of one team running the quarterback a little bit differently, of being more aware of what Ellinger can do? And if that's the case, I'm guessing that's a focus again for this week. Yeah, so with Columbia, I can't remember if it was 49 or 69 yards of his rushing came on pass plays where he pulled the ball down and scrambled. Um and we just didn't do a good enough job in that game. If you remember, Tony went out early. Um, we were we were a little off with our linebacker play. Some of that was we were dropping too deep and our eyes weren't in the right spots. And so Columbia really hurt us in scrambles on pass plays. Um, you know, Ellinger had a couple runs. You know, to me, you're looking at run efficiency. And, like, um, Ellinger had some really efficient runs on third downs. Um, and so – Maybe he didn't have the big long runs or his rushing totals weren't real high, but he was still he was still efficient and effective. Um, but it's hard. I mean, it, it is. There's a reason why, uh, you know, people have running quarterbacks. There's a reason why that, that you know, guys with uh, running quarterbacks usually are rushing totals are a little higher because it's harder. It's, it really is. It's harder to defend. We'll go to Mike Kazaza. Neil, how are you? Good, Mike. How are you? Um, I have two for in the red zone. I'll ask one. I'll come back in the second one if that's all right. But um, can you clarify a little bit the mechanics of you and Jared? Because Jared's kind of danced around a little bit. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't say that. Um, it's not as clear as it could have been. I mean, I didn't follow up. But I just heard different variations on television for who takes over when and how that's distributed. Yeah, we were. We really work together. You know, he he – he definitely he calls some of the plays. I call some of them. You know, we bounce back and forth. I got, I mean, I got the final say. Um, any of the bad ones, you can blame me. But um, now, I mean, for the most part, um, I call them, and then 
you know, he definitely has some say on in some situational football. We'll talk about it during uh, – while the defense is out there sometimes. I'll say, hey, it's kind of what I'm thinking. You know, have this ready. Um, or, hey, have a drive starter ready. Or, hey, I want to go tempo. You just take it. So, it's really – it's it's kind of back and forth. And really everybody in the offensive staff room has has say in what we're doing. Um, but he but he definitely does. He calls some of the plays. Um, sometimes it's situational. Sometimes it's not. It's really not – and I'm not avoiding the question. It's it's really not where at a certain point he takes over or a certain you know it's it's not really that. It's kind of hey, we get in this game. I want you to kind of think this is what I want you to really focus on. So we get hey this situation you call it, or if you got to play, hey do you have something you like? Okay hey call it. Um, that's the way it goes. It's really not a super like scientific deal. All right, so like the ball goes from the twenty-two to the nineteen, he doesn't take over the play calling. Then I get you. No, no. And then, and then in the red zone, terrific up until Saturday, and it looks like you tried darn near everything with calls and formations and ideas, and and I, I don't know, I was satisfied <laughs> with what you put out there, and just unlucky at sometimes. You know, it's um, there's such a it's such a small margin for error. I mean, it really is. I mean, here's the thing: sometimes you call bad plays and they work. Sometimes you call good plays and they don't work. Um, like uh, Jared called the play that that we had Winston scotch free, and it's hard to get somebody that wide open. And so it was really good play design. It's a good time to he wanted to call it. It was a good time to call it, and we had a good play. We just didn't make it right. Um, if you look at that fourth and the first time we went for it on fourth down down the red zone, um, we had Mike wide open. It's hard to get somebody that way. You know what I mean? Like, and then there was other times, you know, where where guys make a play. You know, um. We, we missed a block right at the point of contact on our touchdown, and Letty runs through the guy. You know, so it, it really is. It's a, it's just a small margin for error. Um, we were close. Like, the sack we took after after the touchdown got overturned, uh, Winston's touchdown got overturned, you know, we did, our, 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 our guard put his eyes down. I mean, it was split second. And so, it's, uh, things happen so fast and such a small margin for error. I think as as a coach, you always got to kind of go back and really critically um, analyze with with the plays you're putting your your guys in position to to execute. Um, we definitely do that. I thought I thought we had some good ones, and if I had to do it over again, there's a couple that I'd do differently, and that's probably the case every game, honestly. Okay, we'll go to Chris Anderson. Uh, speaking of margin of error, uh, you know, four and three right now, uh, maybe. Two plays away from six and one. I know, kind of looking at it that way. Maybe media do too. Yeah. Uh, first, do coaches look at it that way? Do they discuss it among themselves? Do you speak about that with your team? And two, when I say something like that, what does that make you think of where your team sits right now? Well, no, I, I don't get into hypotheticals. I don't really, and that, that's just really kind of how my mind works. Somebody asked me uh, last week about recruiting about. Um, somebody, and I'm like, man, like, as soon as that recruiting decision's made, like, I just kind of move on. I don't mean that bad for the prospective student athlete, or I just kind of move on. And um, and you got to have a kind of a short, short memory. Um, you know, obviously, I, I remember almost all the details of every one of the games we played this year, um, but I don't look back. You know, I'll spend some time after the season, like, critically okay hey what do we do well what we didn't do well what do we have to you know how can we get our guys better prepared or is there a certain opponent that's giving us issues that we've got to do some some different things against and and we can excuse me kind of work them in spring practice and those type of things here's 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 what i do know okay there is significant improvement in our football team from a year ago um and the reason I know that is because with four minutes to go in every single game we've played this year, we've had an opportunity to win, which was definitely not the case a year ago. Now, we found a way to win, you know, three of those games that that were, you know, you take out the Eastern game, all right? So we've beaten three conference opponents that 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 were – you know, two. I guess one of them was a was a double overtime game. Kansas State was closer than what the score looked like, and then we 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 were able to pull away from Kansas there in the second half. So we won three of them, and then we've had three of them that, you know, two of them are 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 nationally ranked teams 
that, you know, we just didn't make the plays necessary. One of them, a sack fumble, you know, really set, you know, was really kind of the difference in the game, you know, ran the scoop score. Um, and we didn't play great against Texas Tech, you know. And so I know we're better. Uh, we've got to finish the year off in a strong note. I know we're better. Um, we're not where we want to be because we're not finishing all those games. And so um, I know it's a long answer, Chris. I'm not – I don't get into hypotheticals. I do know we're better. Um, but it is frustrating that we don't – that we hadn't finished those games yet. All of them. Go ahead, Greg. Hey, Neil, analyze your young offensive lineman for me. Maybe start with Zach Frazier and then the guys we have seen only a little or not at all. Yeah, so – I'll just kind of go from left to right because it's easy for me to kind of go through that. Um, I think Brandon Yates played his best game. Uh, really did a, a nice job. We gave him help with Osai, but I thought he he showed really steady improvement. I'm, I'm pleased with how he's played really probably for the last month. Um, you know, Zach, um, he, he had a tough time on Saturday. Didn't play poorly, but uh, that was the that was probably the most struggle he's had. Um, 93 – is is really long. I mean, he's a huge man. I don't. None of you all went to the game, so I don't think you have appreciation for how big a guy he is. Um, and Texas got some big dudes across the board, but he's the biggest. Um, and so that was the most struggles he's had in the game. Um, you know, James Gmitter, who I count as young, he's sophomore. Uh, he played um, more in the game and, and is, is getting better. He's back in the flow of things. Um, Bryson Mays, who's a sophomore, started, played every snap. Um, he's got to get stronger, but he didn't hurt us in the game. And I thought he showed steady improvement from the Kansas State game where he played all but about a series and a half. Um, if you keep going, I think, you know, Parker Moore is getting better. He's getting close to closer to being ready to play. I think he's got a, a for sure future here. Uh, Jaquay Hubbard came in at really – and he, he's he's battled some things, and, um, you know, uh, at home where he hadn't been here as much. He's had some illnesses that he's had to really kind of leave and take care of and full support of myself. Um, and But I think he's got a chance. He just needs an off season. really needs an off season. He missed that last year. Uh, was big for him. I think Jordan White is a guy that um, definitely can play. Um, he He's strength-wise, he's getting there. Um, he had a really good uh, night last night. And so those are some guys – that are showing showing some improvement and, and getting closer to being ready to play. Final question is John Antonic. Go ahead, John. Yeah, just curious. You know, when they redid this schedule, you knew this point was going to be, you know, those five in a row yeah. um, in five straight weeks. How do you think your guys are holding up through this? And where are you at right now with that? Yeah, we're probably showing some signs. Yeah, we're, we're showing some signs. Um, it's a long stretch. Um, especially when you don't have the full – you didn't have the, you know, the full summer and all that kind of stuff to get ready for it. Um, this is, We got the longest stretch. It's been – we talked about it. We got the longest stretch of anybody in our league. And so um, we're going to get through it. We're having to we're having to manage. We managed some practice time last week. Um, the election deal actually probably helped us in that, in, that, uh, in that fashion. We'll manage some practice time today and tomorrow. Um, but it won't be an excuse. I mean, we, we, you know, it's not, it's not going to be a factor in the game. Um, but we are, whether we got some guys, cause we're, we're, you know, you can look at our roster, we're really young. And so we got some guys that are going through this, this kind of grind for the first time and it's wearing on them a little bit and we're going to have to adjust some things to, to take care of them.